In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to amortize a bond issued at a discount using the straight line method of amortization. Now, I have it laid out in T account form here, where I've got the asset and liability account shown over here, and they're part of the balance sheet. And then over on this side, I have the interest expense that we recognize each period on that bond, and that's part of net income on the income statement. So let's look at our example here. We got a $100,000 face value of bond, a 9% stated rate of interest, and it's for five years, and that would be 10 semi-annual payments. So when we um, issue that bond here, we received $96,150 in cash. Now that's based on discounting the $100,000 face value back or maturity value plus the interest payments and using the market rate of interest. In this, in this case, that market rate of interest is 10% per year. So we need a balancing entry between the $96,150 and $100,000 here. And what, what we use is a discount to bonds payable. Now this uh, is a contra account to bonds payable. It reduces the bonds payable account. It also represents uh, interest exp an added interest expense that we recognize on this bond. Now looking here, we have, uh, have the debit balance here of 3850 and that uh, balances with the debit balance here, 96150 and the $100,000 credit balance here. Now looking down here at our interest payable, those are our semi-annual interest payments that we pay on the bond, and those are based on 9% um, or 4.5% per period times the $100,000 face value, or $4,500 interest payments for each of those uh, payment periods. Now looking up over here, we have the interest expense that we recognize each period for those interest payments. And that's based on the um, interest payment amount of $4,500 plus that amortized discount. That amortized discount is actually an extra interest expense that we recognize each period. Okay, let's go and calculate our discount to bonds payable. Now remember this discount to bonds payable acts as an added interest expense to these bonds payable. And it's a balancing account between the cash account here and the bonds payable account and also between the interest payable and the interest expense. So let's go down and make our calculations. First we have a $4,500 interest payment that we pay to the bond holders each period and that's based on a 9% stated rate of interest on the bond or 4.5% per period times that $100,000 and that gives us a $4,500 payment. Next we have the interest expense that we recognize for each of those payments and that's based on a 10% market rate of interest for that bond. And we calculate it in this fashion here. We first have to calculate our discount to bonds payable, and that's based on that total discount amount here of $3,850 divided by those 10 semi-annual interest payments, or we get $385 per period that we ha discount that bond at. And that's the same amount each period here. So what we do here is we take uh, the $385 discount amount and we add it to that $4,500 hundred dollar interest payment to the bondholders and we get an interest expense of forty eight hundred and eighty five dollars and that would be a constant amount for each of those ten payments. Now we also take this discount amount here in this case three hundred eighty five dollars and we add it to the carrying value of the bond and in this case we started out here at ninety six thousand one hundred and fifty dollar carrying value. Now this carrying value is increased each period by this discount amount here. So when we get down to the maturity value of the bond we have a hundred thousand dollar carrying value of the bond. That's same as its face value. Now looking over here on our payments that we made to the bond holders, those interest payments, we have a 10 payments of $4,500 or $45,000 here. And then the interest expense that we recognize on those uh, payments here was for $48,850 total. So subtracting the two here, the $45,000 and the $48,850, we come up with the total here on this discount to bonds payable of $3,850. 
Okay, let's review what we've done here. We've amortized this discount on bonds payable down to a zero balance. And by doing that, we've increased the carrying value of the bond by that discount amount each period here. So we started out with $96,150, and then at its maturity date, the carrying value would be $100,000, which equals its face value. Now, let's look at this discount to bonds payable as a balancing entry between the interest payable and the interest expense that we recognize. So looking here at the first period, we have a $385 credit here to bonds, discount to bonds payable, and then we would add that to the interest payable here of $4,500 for that interest payment. And that balances with the interest expense we recognize here, a $4,885 debit amount. So if we look at our totals here on our discount to bonds payable, we recognize here a $3,850 credit. And then we take our interest payable uh, credit here of $45,000, add those two together, and we get uh, a debit bal uh, balance here with the debit amount of $48,850 for the interest expense. Okay. So let's further look here at this interest payable. Now we reduce that each period by those interest payments that we pay to the bondholders. And then going up here and looking at our cash account, we would reduce cash each period for the uh, amount of those interest payments that we make to the bondholders. And also uh, when that bond becomes due, we reduce cash by its, the face value of that bond or $100,000 here. And then our bonds payable, of course, would be reduced when that bond becomes due or payable. So that's a summary here on how this discount to bonds payable is a balancing entry between the cash and the bonds payable. And it also represents that added interest expense on the, um, on the bonds payable. And that is a balancing account here between the interest payable and the interest expense.